welcome to our, our uh, prayer and, and uh, sermon, service of the Word and Prayer for this day of Pentecost. And uh, hopefully if you are interested in the full worship service, you uh, will tune in for our live stream on our Facebook page at Zion Lutheran Church on Facebook, Grand Coulee. So, uh, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And for this day of Pentecost, the uh, children's hymn that we've chosen for this is a uh, this little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Don't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time, let it shine. Pray the colic of the day. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people, by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding of all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our readings for today are all exciting readings, uh, beginning with uh, Ezekiel. 37 uh, verses 1 through 14. You'll uh, recognize the, the dry bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones and he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a rattling, and behold, a, a rattling, uh, and the sounds of uh, bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh came upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean, cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And then the reading, second reading from Acts chapter 2, uh, a portion of the story of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared on them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear, each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, but that it was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, and blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then our gospel lesson uh, from John, chapter 15. Uh, verses 26 to 27, and then chapter 16, uh, verse 4b through 15. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask, Where are you going? Because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, and righteousness, and judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare it to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For our confession of faith today, we are going to use a portion of the uh, small catechism, the, uh, the second, uh, third petition, the third petition, that's the one that's appropriate for today, the Holy Spirit, 
Uh, if you have the Lutheran study by uh, service book, the Lutheran service book, we're on page 323. So, what is the third article of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And what does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me by His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the tr true faith. In the same way, He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Church of God, of uh, Christian Church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Pentecost. The arrival of the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit? We have several names for him, uh, different names. The Comforter, the Advocate, the Paraclete, uh, the Spirit of Truth, and the Spirit of Life. And, um, and the Helper, that's the one, one that Jesus repeats several times today. So let's focus on that one, the Helper. Uh, how or what does he help? Well, it helps us to believe. That is, it, it helps to convert our hearts from unbelief to faith. It helps us to stay in the faith. We couldn't stay in it on our own. And the Holy Spirit helps to sanctify us. That is, how we are made holy. In the words of John that we focused on a couple of weeks ago, the Holy Spirit helps us to love God and keep His commands. That is, faith and obedience, sanctification. So, I have uh, been mentioning law and gospel several times over the last few weeks, as particularly as we witness to others about the good news, and it's also an important distinction in order to properly understand God's Word as we read it for ourselves. But uh, witnessing is, is not just us, it's the Holy Spirit helping us to speak God's Word to another person. He helps us to speak law, uh, or as John says in this verse, he convicts the world of sin. Um, in Catechism we teach a little acronym to remember this, SOS, the law shows our sin. Before we can be saved, we first, first have to know that we need to be saved. Uh, and sometimes that doesn't need to be spoken. You're with a person who already knows that they are, we might say, broken, that they uh, need to be saved. Uh, they don't have to know all, the whole situation. They don't have to understand all the laws and all the sin that there is affecting them. None of us ever truly understand all the sin that is, uh, that we, is affecting us. But uh, if you find a person who is already convicted of their sins, as I said, you, you might call them a broken person. Um, to keep speaking law to them, <laughs> piling on the, their sins will only crush them down to complete despair until they might believe that they are such a horrible person that God could never love them or forgive them. And, and we've met these people who say this, right? If God knows what I've done, He could never love or forgive a person like me. Now, for a person like that, you might say, well, God certainly does know what you've done, even better than you do. Uh, he does love you, and He does want to forgive you all your sins. He loves you unconditionally, not because uh, of what you can do or what a good person you are, but He just loves you because He is love, right? He loves. That's the first part of God. And the first step in conversion to faith is conviction of sin. To see our errors, 
to realize that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. To, you have to know that you're drowning before you, <laughs> before you grab onto the rope or the, or the life-saving ring that's thrown to you. Uh, before you let somebody pull you into the boat, you have to be willing to be saved. I can think of many people that I've met that I, you know, I think, well, this person is drowning in their sins. Their life is full of trouble. Whether that's addiction or some other thing, I suppose you could say all sin eventually leads to addiction. But as they say in the recovery programs, uh, that if the person won't change until they want to, right? They have to want to change. They have to be convicted of their problem. It is the Holy Spirit that is already at work in that person to convict them of sin, or in the words of the Catechism, enlightening the person to their need for a Savior. Uh, so it isn't just sitting back, the Holy Spirit isn't just sitting back waiting for them to realize it themselves. He is already at work, sometimes through you, if you are the one witnessing to that person. you might say, hey friend, just stop, just stop, take a look at yourself, you need help, <laughs> right? Now we all need help, right? We all need some help from time to time, more help than we like to admit. And the Holy Spirit if you will help you to give you the words if you are the one who is witnessing, speaking to that person, even if they don't listen at that time, at that moment, even if they don't repent immediately, Sometimes it takes years of dropping hints, dropping seeds in that, in that soil. Uh, but you aren't working yourself on this person. It's not you who saved them. It's the Holy Spirit working through you and through all other people who may be witnessing to this person. And then after the person has been lightened, you know, convicted of their sins, then they are ready to hear the gospel, to be enlightened to the good news. So while the law shows our sin, the gospel shows our saviors. See, that acronym works for both. SOS, shows our sin and shows our savior. As St. Peter quotes from the Old Testament, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. From the book of Joel. And later on at the end of this sermon, we didn't read this part yet, but when the crowd of people are cut to the heart, when they are convicted of their sin, and they ask, what shall we do to be saved? Then St. Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off. Everyone who the Lord our God calls to himself. And especially notice that this is also for children. For God is calling them to himself. And they are not seeking God. And that's why we also baptize children. Another verse uh, of, for that. And we see in Ezekiel, in this book, the story uh, is prophesied to the dry bones. And they're coming together. And yet they're not alive yet. They're zombies in our modern world. Uh, they're a full body, uh, but they're not alive. And the Lord commanded him to prophesy to the breath. Now breath and spirit in Hebrew are the same word. <laughs> and it's also true in Greek. The same word, breath and spirit, one word. Now Ezekiel didn't make them alive himself. Like with the, like with the uh, EKG or what are those uh, emergency paddles that we have here for in case somebody has a heart attack. Uh, and they didn't make themselves alive. It was the Word of God and the Holy Spirit working in this mysterious way. God's Word uh, makes them alive. It's beyond our comprehension. Just as in the same way in our own baptism, we are dead in our sins and trespasses. God is washing away our sins. God is making us born again uh, by water and His Spirit and the Word and faith all coming together. Uh, it's such a wonderful thing. So far beyond what we can understand. 
The Holy Spirit takes those who are dead in sin and makes them alive. Before we are, uh, have faith, we're all dry bones. And God has promised He will call us out of our grave to an eternal life. Not just another temporal life, but an immortal, eternal life. A perfect life with Him forever. So, the Holy Spirit is helping us every day of our lives to repent of our sins and turn back to God. He's helping us to fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And trust in God's words. Words of law that convict us and teach us. And also trust in God's words of promise. Of gospel. That He loves us and forgives us of all our sins no matter how many or how bad they may be. Holy Spirit helps us to know God's unconditional love as much as we can. Similar, similar, and yet even stronger than a parent or grandparent. And as a parent or grandparent in love, you sometimes have to say no and teach your children right from wrong. But even when they make bad choices, you still love them. You still love them. Hebrews 12 says, God disciplines those whom he loves. He is the perfect example of a parent, teaching and correcting and disciplining, but always in love. Always in love, because He is love. And you hear the promise of God, that you have the breath of life in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. As St. Peter promised on that Pentecost day, when you are baptized and your sins are forgiven, you have received the Holy Spirit. Baptism is your guarantee that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now God works how and when He wants to, but baptism is your guarantee. So you don't have to wonder. It is in you. It is living in you. The Holy Spirit is your helper. You're not alone trying to earn your salvation, trying to love God, make yourself love God, trying to be good enough. You have a helper. A helper who reminds you of all that God has spoken. His words, both of law that convict you of your sin, and His words of gospel, His promises that you are forgiven, uh, to, the, pro the words of comfort, the words that make you alive. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue with uh, the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. The, the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Um, now we'll sing one of our other hymns, hymns for today. Uh, Pentecost hymn, of course. Uh, The uh, Holy Spirit, Light Divine, number 496, is a, a nice short little tune in this Lutheran service book, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. Holy Spirit, Light Divine, shine upon this heart of mine, chase the shades of night away. Turn the darkness into day. Let me see my Savior's face. Let me all his beauties trace. Show these glorious truths to me, which are only set known to thee. Holy Spirit, power divine, Cleanse this guilty heart of mine. In thy mercy pity me. From sin's bondage set me free. 
Holy Spirit, joy divine, cheer this saddened heart of mine. Yield a sacred, settled peace. Let it grow and still increase. Holy Spirit, all divine, dwell within this heart of mine. Cast down every idle throne, reign supreme and reign alone. Again, if you want to join our full worship service, all of our hymns and the full liturgy, uh, please tune in to our live stream, 11 o'clock Pacific time. Find our, our Facebook page that I've linked to here. Now may the, the <clears throat> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen.